Oh Lord, it belongs to you. Thank you, oh Lord. That you are the Prince of Peace. Thank you for your presence. The Prince of Peace. Thank you for the peace. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the comfort, oh God. Lord, thank you for your presence this morning, oh God. Lord, we are excited, oh God, about your word this morning, oh God. We are so excited once again, oh Lord. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you will satisfy us, oh God, once again. We need your word, oh God. We need your presence. We need you in our lives, oh God. Lord, talk to us, oh God. Talk to us, Lord. Touch our heart. Lord, let your word change us, oh God. Let your word change our, our, our mindset, oh God, for your glory, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, once again, oh God, for your glory, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Can we give the best clap of the Lord? Since yesterday, we we're just talking about the back to school. Since yesterday, we we're talking about birthdays, anniversaries. 
but now everyone is preparing for Christmas. And during this time of the year, I always remember how we celebrate Christmas in the Philippines. Do you know that in Philippines, I don't know about you guys, uh, I don't know about in other country, but in Philippines, we have the longest Christmas celebration. We have the longest Christmas celebration, do you know that? Beginning in Vermont, September, October, November, September, you can hear music, Christmas music on the radio on the month of September. Uh, maybe September, October, you can see some uh, Christmas decorations, Christmas decors in houses, offices, no? in the malls. You can see some. But especially on the month of December, choir singing, uh, street lights in Makati, in Manila, full of uh, 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 Christmas lights. Music filling the air. The bells ringing. When I was a kid, I remember we used the bottle cup. You know the tansan? The bottle cup, we use it for uh, tambourine, for, for carols, for, for, uh, use it for, uh, for tambourine. Do you remember that? Did you do that? Yeah. It's so good to hear Christmas, Christmas joyous sounds. It feels good during December, right? Do you agree? But listen to this. Could you say to your neighbor, listen to this? In the midst of all the joyous sounds, the joyous holiday, jolly holiday, there are other sounds too. There's, there are other sounds of Christmas. The agony, the pain, the heartache, the suffering, the sorrow, the angst. This is angry sounds of children in some part of the in some part of the world who are being sold into sex trade, slavery. There are lonely, hurting, and hungry people living on the street, begging for money, begging for help. And same thing, if you could go, if you can go back two thousand years ago, where the very the very first Christmas happened, we we would hear variety sounds juice though so you can see you can hear the sounds of bc sounds of animals angels sing on high sounds of excited shepherds who want to see the baby in the manger and probably mary's voice singing lullaby shout of soldiers, cries of children, wailing of mother's children, the anguished mother. And this is the message this morning. This is what happened next when the wise men left. Can you all rise up to read the scripture? When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape from Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. Where he stayed until the death of Herod, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said to the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been acquitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were three years old and under. In accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. All boys heard in drama, weeping in the great morning, Rachel will be weeping for children, and refusing to be comforted, because they are not 
can we just uh, remain standing? Let's just pray for a while. Yes. Lord, thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to us, oh God. Lord, we want to be excited about this word, excited about your message this morning. I just pray, oh Lord, to open our hearts, open our minds, oh God. Anoint us, anoint your word, Lord. Anoint everyone who is here, oh God. And let your word, Lord, be spoken in every corner of this room. Thank you, Lord, that you are generous, God. Thank you, Lord, that you love, you love us. Thank you, Lord, and we give you glory, all our praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can you sit down? <coughs> so this passage of Scripture reveals an insecure or near, nearly insane old king who felt his rule threatened when he heard that another king had born. And when he couldn't find a child, he issued a decree. Mwasha ng batas. That the little boys in Bethlehem, two years below, were to be killed. So when we talk about the sound of Christmas, maybe we need to remember also the shouts of the soldiers the cries of the children, and the wailing of their mothers. For these are a part of, Ch of Christmas sounds too. And they're a part of what God is trying to communicate with us this time of the year, this season of the year. So number one, we're going to talk about three points here. Number one, there is suffering in the world, and God came to bear it with us. There is suffering in the world, and God came to bear it with us. The Lord is saying, I know that there is suffering in the, in the world, and I come to bear it with you. Christmas comes to a suffering world. I will repeat. Christmas comes to a suffering world. God does not guarantee to take away all our sufferings, burdens, only to bear it with us. He will carry us, He will help us to carry all our burdens and sufferings. So we don't have to carry our burdens alone. Remember this. We don't need to suffer alone. Whether it's small or big, something personal. When you cannot find any friend or any relative to share your suffering, we can always look up to God. Amen. Amen. So the Bible is always honest. The Bible is always honest that the story of Christmas is not only about angels. It's not only about shepherds. It's not only about the, the wise men. But it also tells us about King Herod. His soldiers. Those little children being murdered. I don't know if you can imagine this. Especially for the parents. I don't know if you can imagine this that... Uh, you were one of those parents in Bethlehem on that day. You were one of those parents in Bethlehem on that day. You have the baby with you. He's 18 months below, uh, 18 months, 2 years old. The baby that captured your heart. The baby that captured your heart and the sparkle of his eyes brightens up your day. Did you get me? As if he's your life, that baby. He's so sweet. You love her. You love him. Then, the 
soldiers of King Herod burst into your home. Nagmamadali. Pumasok sa bahay. Searching all the rooms in your house. Until they find your baby. They took them away from you. And killed him. And killed him. The anguish, the wailing of the cries of those parents is a part of Christmas story too. We get we just get used to it, no? You shepherds, baby Jesus, the wise men, the angels. But this scenario is part of Christmas story. Anguish is still very much a part of the Christmas scene today. And even today, there are many men, there are many who are suffering. Many who are lonely, grieving. That is why they find a little joy in, in the Christmas celebration. Kaya hindi sila makapagsaya. And sadly, could you say sadly? sadly? Even suicide happened during Christmas season. Because of the lonely feeling. Because of emptiness. Because of isolation. Especially those people who are far from their loved ones. And the worst is, even murders happen during this time of season. Murders because too much obsession of money. Too much obsession for money, they will kill. Because, the material, because of the materialistic orientation of Christmas. Do you agree? Yes. And in some parts of the world, the crime rates during during this time of the year increase. The theft, pickpockets, holdups, and even murders. And uh, let me read the story. Let me read the story of a Jewish author named Eli Weissel. Eli Weissel, a Jewish author who wrote the book entitled Night, was a slave, was a slave laborer in a World War II German concentration camp. He writes about the Holocaust and the things that happened to him during the war. One evening, they returned after a day of slave labor to discover that three gallows or yupambigte had been erected in the center of the camp. Three prisoners were going to be executed. And the guards had ordered to force all the other prisoners to stand and watch the execution. Gusto pa panoorin nila, no? Two of the victims were men. But to their horror, they saw that the third was as only a small boy. Now, the rope were put around their necks and all three were made to stand up on chairs. Then the chairs were kicked out from the underneath them. The two men died instantly as the weight of their bodies broke their necks. But the little boy was so light that his neck did not break. And there he hung. Gasping for breath, nagiging alo. Dangling at the end of the rope. And the prisoners were forced to stand there and watch him, and watch him for more than 30 minutes. Until finally, he died. In the terribleness of that time, one of the men behind Weissel cried out. He said, you say that there is a God. Then where is he? Where 
is he now? Why is said? I turned back and looked at him and said, there's the God. There he is. He is hanging at the end of the room. I'm not sure I understand fully or 100% what Mr. Weissel is telling us, telling to us. But I can see here, during the suffering, God is with them. God suffered with them. God hurting with them. God bleeding with them. And this is the message of Christmas. Our God is not beyond the stars. Our God is not, or, or far away in the heavens. Hindi siya malayo. Hindi siya nasa langit lang. Hindi siya sa kalawakan lang. God is with us. <coughs> Would you say to your neighbor, God is, God is with us. God is with us, suffering with us, hurting with us, bleeding with us. And that's the message of Christmas. God is with us. And number two, there is uncertainty in the world. And God came to lead us through it. So, the, the, another message of Christmas, there is uncertainty in this world. Walang kasiguraduhan sa mundong ito. Do you agree? Amen. But the good news is, God came to lead us through uncertainty. Amen. <coughs> Think the uncertainty in the lives of Mary and Joseph. Could we read the Matthew 2, 13 to 14? Can we go back to that, uh, to that uh, verse? When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. So they pack up their belonging. They just trust God. Yes, the, the angel told them that Jesus Christ was to be the Savior. That he will save his people from sin. But, what was the, what was the responsibility with this. Ano gagawin nila ngayon? How they will raise the Son of God? What they will do next? We will just, they, they're, just, they're just waiting for the instruction. How will you, you, how they will raise the Son of God? Etc. Etcetera. Et cetera. <coughs> There was so much uncertainty in it. Wala kasiguraduhan. And our lives are uncertain. <coughs> our lives are uncertain too. Can I ask you this? Who among you here thought that you, that you were going to work in Kuwait after your college or after your high school? Who among you? knows that you're going to work in Kuwait after high school or after college. Who among you thought that you will meet your husband or your wife here in Kuwait? Meron ba? O may naghahanap pa? Still, ha? Still hoping. You never know. There is uncertainty in this world. And we know some workers here in GCI, they met, they met their, uh, their husband or wife here. They fell in love with each other, and now they are family. No one knows. And I myself, actually, I myself never thought 
that I'm going to work here in Kuwait. To be honest. I myself never I never thought that I'm going to, to work here in Kuwait. My first abroad was in Dubai. I work as a salesperson in a, in a fashion retail. Then for some reason I went back to Philippines and we stayed there for for almost three years or three years like that. Then after that I, I, I applied again to Dubai. Then a few months later, the visa came. <coughs> but when the visa came, the visa was from Kuwait. So I went to agency and asked them, why? How come? I'm applying for Dubai. Because I, I already know the place, been there, and I have friends there, blah, blah, blah. The owner of the agency asked me, do you want or you don't want? So my wife and I um, talk about it because that time there was Saddam Hussein was a great threat in Kuwait that time. But since we already have a child, our first child, Ara, was uh, in seven months old. And uh, you know, financial, financial uh, reason, I accepted the offer. And I said to myself when I arrived in Kuwait, I said to myself, no life here in Kuwait. No life, unlike Dubai, no? So I said to myself, I will stay here for two years only. For two years, I, keep, I compute my, my, my earnings, no, my savings, I will, I will stay here for two years only. After two months, my wife followed me. My wife came here. I <laughs> know. Uh, actually, I was the one who gave the who gave her uh, agencies. Then we brought our first child here, Ara. He was uh, almost two years old then. Then another baby came, another baby came, and I have family here. Kids are all studying here. I said only two years. Now it's already 20 years. <laughs> but when I look back those years, guys, it's not that easy. I remember the time when my wife lost her job. The, the visa was almost expired. We have a travel ban. We sent kids back home. We have a bad debt. We cannot see how it could work out. The odds were against us. But God said in the book of Isaiah, I'm going before you and I will level those mountains. Hallelujah. And those mountains of troubles, the mountains of bad debts, the, the, the mountains of travel ban, etc., etc. Just one touch of his favor. It was no match for our God. He turned those mountains into a level ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He blessed us financially. There are times we travel twice a year. He blessed us with two cars. My three daughters came back. They're with us. They're studying here in Kuwait. He restored us. And I know there will be more mountains ahead of me. I know it's not the end of the world. But I don't, I don't need to climb over it. It's going to be easier than I think. Because we have a God, a God that goes before us. Amen. And He will turn that mountains into a, into a level ground once again. We don't know about tomorrow, guys. We don't know about tomorrow.
But we know God who hold our tomorrows in His hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And He wants us to lead. To lead our way. He wants us to lead our way. There is uncertainty, but there is a God who leads us through that uncertainty. Hallelujah. And by the way, I never thought that I would be a pastor one day. Not in my wildest imagination. But glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Hallelujah. And finally, bilis natin. Finally, the third message of Christmas is this. There is a death in the world, but God came to overcome it. There is death in the world, but God came to overcome it. I believe for many people it is hard to talk about them. Right? Do you agree? It's hard to talk about them. That is why for some people instead of saying he died they prefer to say he passed away. Hindi pa saway. Passed away. Hindi pa saway. He passed away or he's no longer with us. In other nationality, expired. <laughs> expired in other nationality. And I think if every one of us would be honest, would be, uh, would, if every one of us is honest, we would admit that none of us wants to die. In fact, if it's possible, we would like to avoid the process of dying. Kung pwede lang, iwasan natin yung proseso ng pagkamatay. If we can just be like a prophet Elijah or prophet Enoch, no? that uh, they were taken up into heaven, they were taken up into heaven. Kinuha na lang sila ng Diyos. Dapat ganun na lang. Or rapture na lang. No? Just a rapture. But the Bible says in Romans 5.12. In Romans 5.12 it says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world to one man, the death through sin, and in this way, death came to all men because all sin. And in Romans 6 to 83, please. You know, this is, this is a, a memory verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life, God, is eternal life, eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. For the wages of sin is dead. So as long as sin exists in this world, death will always be, will always be, will never be far away. That is why people die every day because of sin existed in this world, exists in this world. That is why people die every day. Death will always be here. Just like suffering, just like uncertainty. But listen to this. Could you say to your neighbor, listen to this? <laughs> but there was one child who was saved. One child who was carried off into Egypt. That one day, he would die on the cross. Not for his own.
but for the sins of others. And that is Jesus Christ, who became the offering, the ransom, the sacrifice for all our sins. Amen. Amen. There is death in our world, but there is God who has overcome it. The death is defeated. Could you say that death is defeated? Yes. Overcome by God. In 2 Timothy 1 10, please. But it has now been revealed. Through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has destroyed, remember this word, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. The word translated destroyed means to render powerless. Could you say powerless? Powerless. Or tinanggala ng kapangyarihan. When Jesus rose from the dead, He broke the power of death forever. Would you say forever? Forever. This is what Jesus means when He said in John eleven twenty six, 26. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe in this? This is what He's saying. That whoever lives and believes in him will never die. <laughs> that is why, for us Christians, death is temporary. Remember this. For us Christians, for us who receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, Death is temporary. Death is temporary interruption. Passing from one place, one place, uh, from, from one stage of life to another. Paul called his death at departure. Ganun lang, transfer lang tayo. That is why Paul Calls his death a departure. Can we read the Second Timothy four six? For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and time has come for my departure. For my departure, as if they will just go to the airport. It's just, it's just like you're going for a vacation. It's just like going to your own country. I remember Pastor Sam, when he's preaching, he said that your last breath, breath here on earth is the first breath in the next life. Parang, wala yung hinga mo, ganun na. The last breath in earth, the first breath, the next life. That's why uh, Christian, that is why the death of the believer in, in Christ should not be sad. Dapat huwag tayo manong. Don't be sad. We should be glad. Could you say to your neighbor, you should be glad? You should be glad. But not now. Not now. But not now. May Christmas party pa. That is why the funeral, you know the funeral, should not be a place of mourning. The funeral, for a believer, 
See the first three letters in funeral. Fun. Fun. Funeral. F U N. Fun. It should be fun. It should be like that. There's a death, as we read, there's a death in our world, but Jesus came to overcome it. Follow the leader only. Whatever the step of Jesus' death, we'll just follow the step of Jesus. Follow the leader. Jesus resurrected. That's why he said, who believes in me will never die. And that's the message of Christmas. Jesus was born to die for our sins. And in this article, I, I read that it's estimated that in the whole span of human history, there have been approximately 100 trillion people born mula pa nung una. Out of all those births, only one was born to save the world. To save the world from sin and death through God's gift of love. And that is Jesus Christ. And that is Jesus Christ. And this is the center of our celebration. Sometimes, no? Your job, party, plans, music. We heard a lot of sounds, but we forgot the other sounds of Christmas. The crying of the children and in their mothers the shout of the soldiers. And God, I believe, this is what tried to communicate with us. That even now, there are still other sounds of Christmas. <laughs>